let's talk about my guy Kobe. So he's a basketball player and uh, only about a week or maybe 10 days prior to those clips that you just saw of him dunking, he had never dunked before. Okay, so he went from not being able to dunk to going two hands off the dribble um, with a very short period of time. So he made some big changes pretty fast. And uh, I just want to talk about how I think that happened. Okay, so Kobe came to train at Acceleration uh, back in December. Um, this was uh, after a semester of basketball. He's at a prep school. So at school, he had been in basketball practice almost every day, uh, as well as lifting almost every day. So, you know, definitely doing a lot of work. There's not a lack of training there. Um, but after talking to him about what he had been doing, um, it sounded like most of the lower body strength training he'd been doing was uh, deadlifts. So either hex bar deadlift or barbell, barbell RDLs. Um, so a lot of posterior chain work. Um, and then like upper body and core. Uh, so the big thing missing there you know, when I hear that is like, okay, well, what about the quadriceps? You know, what about the knee extension strength? And uh, go figure, he also told me that he had been having some uh, anterior knee pain, uh, some, some jumper's knee. So to me, I saw an obvious need for some quadriceps strengthening. So that was one of our first uh, priorities was we need to do some knee bending strength exercises, uh, make sure we're bringing up quad strength, getting that tendon healthier. Um, as well as, you know, hopefully enhancing performance. Here's some clips that show uh, the type of exercises we were doing. Uh, nothing fancy here, just some good old fashioned quad work. Because of the knee pain, we did have to start out with more gentle quad work, but these exercises are what we progressed to. Now, within uh, probably a week of starting training, Kobe's knees were feeling uh, significantly better and he was able to do, you know, some of those like hard knee exercises uh, with, with little to no pain. Uh, so that was good progress. Uh, then what happened a few weeks in was there was a day that his hang clean uh, just popped up 20 pounds. And when I saw that, I was thinking, okay, he's got to be jumping better at this point. And uh, sure enough, I saw him the next day. He came in and said, I was on the court last night. And so this is, you know, after our workout later in the day, he said, I was on the court last night and I dumped uh, first time ever. So that was awesome. So we stayed on that path, uh, kept trying to get him stronger. We actually did end up doing some heavy squats. And uh, there was a day we worked up to a heavy squat single. And then uh, he came back the next day for his workout. And he was standing on the basketball court. I was finishing up my prior session. And he just came over to me. He was like, I need to jump today. And so he just had this feeling that it was going to be good. And then he went off and did the, you know, those clips you saw at the beginning, the two-hand dunk off the dribble, off the lob, all this stuff. Um, so yeah, he, he really leveled up within a short period of time. And I think that getting stronger in the quadriceps, getting his knee extension stronger was probably the biggest thing that did that for him. Now that doesn't mean that these exercises are magical and they're just going to give everybody six inches of vertical in a month or whatever. Um, but in this context, you know, they were very influential, uh, at least for a short period of time. The other thing is he was still playing basketball when he was training during this time uh, throughout this. It was a little bit over a month that I saw him before he went back to school. Uh, he was still playing a good amount of basketball. So it's not like he was really resting, but um, you know, it wasn't like the basketball practice grind. So he maybe, maybe was a little less fatigued and maybe uh, having a little bit more fun in that department. Um, so that's a factor to consider as well. So this is one of those situations where you have an athlete who's doing a lot of work, um, I'm honestly doing a lot of good work, but, uh, you know, adjusting the details to meet the needs of this athlete in this context really made a big difference there. Um, and it also goes to show how you need to, you need to understand hip and knee dominance and understand if you have a, uh, hip dominant athlete. And if you have a training program that has mostly been focused on hip dominance, then, you know, some knee focused exercises are probably going to be really good for that person.